Hello students, greetings of the day. I am Mrs. Usha Vasani. Welcome you all to RKC Online Social Studies class. Today we are going to talk about chapter number 15, The Coming of British, part 2. First of all, let us revise or recap the previous learning. In part 1, we studied about different periods of Indian history. We discussed about knowing our country India and then we studied about the advent of Europeans that is Portuguese, Dutch, British and French. Now today's learning objectives would be to understand the beginning of colonial rule in India. Students we studied uh, in the previous video that Portuguese were driven away by the Dutch and the Dutch were had to give up by the coming of British and the French came but out of French and British the British proved to be uh, more stronger. So now today in this video we are going to understand about the beginning of colonial rule in India that is British rule in India. Now to know what attracted British to invade India, we will also know about the British journey in India. We will know who allowed British merchants to trade in India. Then we will have a glimpse about Aurangzeb's reign. We will also know about the change of British intentions after having a trade centre that is after they established the company in India there was some change in uh, of British intentions so we will see about that and there was a big battle and that battle became famous as Battle of Plassey. So what made the war between some of the Indian settlements with the British what was the reason about it? So we will know all these today in this video. So let us begin with today's learning. As we talked earlier, the Dutch, were, uh, Dutch followed Portuguese and then the Dutch gave up and British came to India. The tales of India's prosperity reached England through the British travellers who came to India. The British merchants formed the East India Company in 1600 and this is how they advented India. So let us continue from the advent of British in India. When and why did British first choose to invade India? The arrival of Vasco da Gama opens a sea route from Europe to the East after that, India became the center of attraction for Europe's trade. The British Joint Stock Company, that is East India Company, was founded by John Watts and George White, White in 1680. That Joint Stock Company was owned primarily by British merchants and aristocrats. The East India Company had no direct link to to the British government, meaning that earlier government had nothing to do with the British merchants, means the people who were only and only uh, here to trade with each other. So that was the beginning that why British chose India because when they saw that Portuguese are making lot of profit, even they got attracted uh, for doing the trading with India. First, let us know that who ruled India in 1680. The Mughal Empire ruled most of India and Pakistan in the 16th and 17th centuries. It consolidated Islam in South Asia and spread Muslim and particularly Persians arts and culture as well as the faith. The Mughals were Muslims who ruled a country with a large Hindu majority. Now, Royal Charter forms the East India Company 
setting in motion a process that ultimately results in the subjugation of India under British rule. Children in 1605, Akbar the Great dies at the age of 63 and his son Jahangir succeeds him as fourth Mughal emperor. So it was Jahangir who was ruling in 1600 AD over India. When did British come to India? The British landed on Indian subcontinent at the port of Surat on 24th August 1608 for the purpose of trade. The British merchants wanted to set their monopoly for trading in India and they started having rivalry with other European communities like Dutch, Portuguese and French. Now first let us see that what attracted the British to India. India was the jewel in the crown of British Empire as well as spices, jewels and textiles. India had a huge population. India and the British capitalized on this. They regimented India's manpower as the backbone of their military power. The British East India Company came to India as traders as we discussed earlier also that in spices a very important commodity in Europe back then it was used to preserve meat. Apart from that they primarily traded in silk, cotton, indigo dye, tea and opium. So children these were the main attractions for British that they were very fond of spices because the non-veg can be preserved very well and it remains fresh for longer time if, they, uh, if the spices are put in the meat, on the meat. So it worked as preservative for the meat. That was the main attraction. Silk, cotton, indigo dye tea and opium were other attractions. So basically British were attracted to come to India and trade with these items. Now it's okay that British were attracted to put up their center but they started having rivalry with other European communities. So basically let us know who allowed British to enter India. In 1612, Sir Thomas Rowe visited Mughal Emperor Jahangir. That was for the arrangement of a company exclusive rights to decide and establish factories in Surat and other areas of India. Sir Thomas Rowe's four years long negotiations with Jahangir didn't prove successful. But the visit did mark the beginning of a relationship between Indians and British. As we saw earlier that British entered or landed India in 1608. But after four years of negotiation and pleading, Jahangir finally allowed them to set up their trade center in Surat. So students finally the beginning of British journey in India started. Sir Thomas Rowe visited the court of Mughal Emperor Jahangir in 1615 and obtained permission to trade in Surat. Later trade centers were established in Agra, Ahmedabad and Broch. After this the British established their trade centers in Calcutta, Madras and Bombay as well. Calcutta was their first capital for the trade. It was the early days of East India Company's domination in India. The company had started trading in 1600 CE but by 1760s it was 
in effective control of the three presidency of Calcutta, Madras and Bombay. British journey in India there followed through the 17th century a period of peaceful trading through factories operating under Mughal grounds and they held good for Surat and later for Hooghly in Bengal. So students finally when uh, British started trading it was very peacefully done the trading was done and they were solely only the traders at that time so everything was very peacefully going under the supervision of Mughal emperors. As we discussed earlier when the British entered India it was Aurangzeb, the Mughal emperor, who was ruling over most part of India. The British East India Company unsuccessfully tried to obtain a Farman, that is a grant that England regularly wanted to trade throughout the Mughal Empire in 1689 when Aurangzeb dispatched a strong fleet of grab ship from Janjira near Mumbai, that is Bombay. Then ships, the company sent uh, the envoy to Aurangzeb's camp to plead for a pardon and promised a better behavior in future. Meaning, once when uh, Britishers were allowed to trade, the British started having some of the other cheating done with the king. They did not take any permission or grant from Mughal emperor and they regularly started sending the ship to England. When Aur Aurangzeb came to know that they were taking the ship without grant, he captured one ship from Janjira that is near Mumbai one place I mean that is through the waterways and they uh, the uh, army of Aurangzeb captured that ship. Now after that Aurangzeb was so angry that uh, he said to dismiss all the trading centers of British. So the company sent one envoy means a people means a person to beg pardon from Aurangzeb and promised him about better, few, better behavior in future. Students, now let me share one more incident of Aurangzeb's time uh, during the English people uh, who were thinking or taking Aurangzeb very light. Now, in September 1695, English pirate Henry captured a grand Mughal convoy near Surat. I hope you all know what is the meaning of pirate. Pirate are the people, pirates are the people who loot the ship which are sailing in the sea. Like how we have robbers who rob some malls or shops or bank. In the same way, pirates are the people who rob the ships during uh, when, when they are uh, in the, they are sailing in the sea. So, once one English pirate, he captured one Muslim uh, uh, ship which was sailing back home from the pilgrimage of Mecca. So, when it was returning, this pirates looted the ship, the people from the ship. Now, when Aurangzeb got the news, he ordered an armed attack against English governed city of Bombay. So what he did, Aurangzeb when he got the news that people are looted when they were coming back from the pilgrimage, he sent one army and attacked on the English people who were almost in a big colony in Bombay. He also shut down four East India Company fact companies factories which were uh, there in Bombay. See, he also shut down those the factories and imprisoned the workers and captains. So after that, English people, the uh, English governor the, that time who was leading the, the governor, he sent envoys and begged pardon from Aurangzeb that this will not happen next time 
and excuse us and pardon us we are here for just doing the trade so this will not happen next time so at that time this is one more incident of aurangzeb's strength he was a very strong king that time and english people did not dare to uh, cheat us or loot us at any incident so this was the strength of aurangzeb in a uh, 17th century everything was very smoothly going on till aurangzeb was on the throne the empire of mughals gradually weakened after the death of aurangzeb in 1707 ce and the british english east india company became more ambitious now when they thought that aurangzeb is no more they started having the wicked ideas in their mind and they their intentions started spoiling now they wanted to take control over various parts of india they wanted to bring bengal under their control because it was the richest province in the country and that became the main reason behind the battle of plassey now as english east india company became more ambitious means the english people the british people wanted they wanted to set uh, spread their control over various parts of india and they were very sure that the king after aurangzeb is not that strong as how aurangzeb was so they started taking steps towards controlling or taking control over india now during that time nawab sirajuddola was uh, the nawab of the whole of bengal so and he had just recently came over the throne because his uh, because the previous king had just died and he had taken over the charges uh, and he was on the throne at that time so the british uh, had started maintaining an army in bengal they also had begun to fortify calcutta now sirajuddola ordered the removal of british army and all the fortifications now when uh, nawab sirajuddola allowed british to uh, come and start their factory in the or uh, started trading in uh, bengal that was they were doing since long because in calcutta already they had their uh, companies uh, one of the offices but now when uh, sirajuddola allowed them to come and uh, settle in bengal britisher took it for granted and they started uh, fortifying means they started having their own area and started having their uh, own trade their own way of living and all that fortifications they started doing in calcutta now when sirajuddola came to know he wanted that british should Uh, they are allowed to live in bengal but they cannot have their own areas their own separate uh, ways of living so nawab ordered that this should be removed the fortifications should be removed when british refused nawab got very angry and he declared a war against them when british did not pay a heed to sirajuddola's ordered orders nawab got very angry and he declared a war on them nawab got very angry and finally the battle took place battle took place at palashi now we call it as plassey but it was actually palashi a place on the banks of river hugli and then uh, at that time it was uh, the nadia was the capital of bengal and there the battle took place the opponents were sirajuddola the last independent nawab of bengal and the british east india company why he is called the last independent nawab of bengal because after that whoever came on the throne were just the puppets of british so here it is said that nawab was the last independent nawab of bengal and the british east india company on the other side now 
the war was only because siraj ud-daula who had just come year before he offered english to stop the extension of their fortification and british did not listen to him rather he did not accept his orders and hence it was a war situation because nawab got angry and he declared war against english east india company now at that time the army head uh, of british was robert clive now robert clive what he did was he bribed mir jafar mir jafar was the commander in chief of nawab's army means he was the head of the army on nawab's side so what did the english people do english people like robert clive first bribed mir jafar and promised him to make him nawab of bengal robert clive approached mir jafar and told him that we will make you the nawab if you help us in betraying your nawab and mir jafar was always with the intention that he wanted to come on the throne of bengal he wanted to take the charges of bengal so he thought that this is a good idea that with the help of british i can uh, take over the throne of bengal and so he betrayed his nawab this was the whole now what let us see what happens further when mir jafar was bribed by robert clive finally the battle took place on 23rd june 1757 children you can see the picture that how huge army on both the sides and this was a very big battle and so it is remembered or noted in the history of india the battle was preceded by an attack on british controlled calcutta by nawab siraj ud-daula and the black hall massacre the british sent reinforcement from madras and recaptured calcutta tensions and suspicions between siraj ud-daula and british culminated in the battle of plassey the battle was waged during the seven years war and in the mirror of their european rivalry and the french east india company sent a small contingent of fight uh, to fight against the british siraj ud-daula had a numerically superior force and made his stand in plassey the british worried about being outnumbered formed a conspiracy with siraj ud-daula's demoted army chief mir jafar along with others such as yar lutuf khan jagat shekh sets uh umichand and rai durlab mir jafar and the other three does assemble their troops near the battlefield but made no move to actually join the battle soldiers of colonel robert clive moving to the flight of siraj ud-daula from the battlefield and the inactivity of the conspirators the battle ended in 11 hours robert clive finally emerged victorious so children this was the whole thing that when siraj ud-daula declared a war on british british came to know that siraj ud-daula had a big army numerically means number wise he had a huge army but then they had to have means they made a conspiracy because they were worried that uh, they might be defeated so they did a conspiracy and took mir jafar on their side so mir jafar uh, yar lutuf khan jagat seth umi chand and rai durlab were the heads of different troops so when siraj ud-daula himself was on the battlefield he called out for the other troops to come and join mir jafar took a huge uh, army a huge troop on till the battlefield 
but did not make any move on the battle to join him so finally sirajuddola was you know betrayed by the conspiracy and he was betrayed by his own people and this was the reason that he was defeated by robert clive and finally robert clive became victorious now mir jafar was captured and put behind the bars he was imprisoned and finally killed on june 24 1757 mir jafar got the nawabi in history he was called clive's donkey after 3 years of nawabi's rule a dispute began to british with mir jafar and it was surely going to happen because he was just a puppet of british so finally british or uh, mir jafar also started having problem with british after the battle of plassey mir jafar climbed the throne of the largest bengal after being nawab mir jafar did not dare to show any power he was just like a puppet show of the english mir jafar got the opportunity to become a nawab for only 5 years by betrayal with sirajuddola and after 5 years he started having problem and there was again some conspiracy also made to remove him now coming back to point we were talking about battle of plassey and that was a very huge battle which took place in 1757 between sirajuddola and the british army however in that battle robert clive emerged victorious sirajuddola was captured and put to death but this was the first step towards the conquest of bengal after capturing bengal and putting mir jafar though mir jafar was on the on the throne but still he was a puppet ruler so english people was feeling that they have captured the whole of bengal and it was the biggest and the richest province of that time so now british intention started spoiling and they started interfering even in the political matters of india so this was the beginning of colonial rule in india after the battle of plassey children i hope you all must have enjoyed to know about mughal emperor uh, aurangzeb then a few ways of his dealing with english people we also discussed about sirajuddola and uh, as he was controlling the richest and the biggest province of bengal we discussed about sirajuddola and he tried to uh, stop british people but finally there was a battle among them and that was a very uh, famous battle which was noted in indian history the battle of plassey so after that the victory of battle made english people more stronger in their intentions to take control over india and this was their beginning to take the charge of india and slowly what happens next we'll see in the next episode we'll see in the next video so stay tuned do not miss any of the videos in between see it in complete order wise to be connected to the chapter thank you and stay safe as of now i am signing off see you soon with another learning video till then keep learning